Right, in a lot of my videos, I use the term voltage divider, and they appear in my circuits all over the place. Um, but it occurred to me that some viewers might not actually be that familiar with them. They're quite basic and simple in reality. So what are they and how do they work? Well, let's take a look. Okay, start with a simple circuit. We've got a battery and two resistors in series, so 1K and 1K. And if we say that this is a 10 volt supply, then the voltage that we get at this point here in between the two resistors is actually gonna be five volts. Um, and if we change that to a 9K resistor there, we get one volt. And if we flip them around, then we get nine volts. Um, so what's happening? Well, if you look at the total resistance here, that is gonna be 10K, because these are in series, so nine and one is 10K. And then that means your current flowing through this circuit is one milliamp. This is basic Ohm's law. So 10 volts um, divided by a 10K resistance, that's one milliamp of current flowing around here. That means there's one milliamp flowing through this resistor, there's one milliamp flowing through that resistor as well. Um, and then just applying Ohm's law again across that resistor, if we've got one milliamp across a 9K resistor, that means you must have nine volts across it. So hence, when I measure there, I get nine volts, okay? So it's basic, it's basic Ohm's law. Okay, we can look at this another way. Um, you don't have to go through the Ohm's law. It's much, it, there's a much simpler formula for this. So first of all, if we call this R1 and R2, our resistors, and we call this the total resistance, that plus that as our RT, our resistance total. We call this V in, which is currently at 10 volts, and we'll call that V out, because that's our output voltage, okay? Then the formula is that simple. Our output voltage here is, is our input voltage, which is 10, multiplied by this resistance value divided by the total re resistance. So it's this over the collective resistance is kind of the um, division that you're gonna to apply to this voltage, okay? And it works every time, it's that simple. Uh, so our, our voltage L, as before, we start with 10 volts, we got 9K resistance at R2, divide that by our total resistance, which is 10K, it equals nine volts. So if we change that to a one ohm and a nine ohm rather than 10K, sorry, rather than 1K and 10K, exactly the same thing, the, the proportions are the same, it's one and nine, uh, giving us, um, nine over a total of 10. However, you've got to bear in mind that now you've only got 10 ohms of resistance running through that circuit. So 10 volts, 10 ohms, that's one amp of current you've now got flowing through. So make sure your resistors are rated at that and make sure you've got supply to sustain that one amp for a period of time you're gonna to wanna to run it. So you've got to be careful about the values you select here. All right. Um, and let's just change this back now to, we're gonna have a 1K and a, and a 1K here. So we've got, coming out of here, five volts, okay? Because 1K and 1K is 2K. Across here, uh, it's one over two. It's 10 times one over two is five volts. You might think, oh great, I can run a five volt device from that, like my LCD I've shown there. But no, you can't, because actually, that is putting a load on the circuit. It's just like putting another resistor here. That, that LCD display it was gonna have effectively um, current running through there with some resistance, of course, but it will have current running through there as well. So now you end up with these two resistors in parallel. Your total resistance you're not gonna know because you don't know the resistance of that LCD. It probably change depending on what you're putting on the screen or how bright you set the backlight. And then your formula becomes all kinds of uh, complex. So no, you can't use that to um, put any hefty load or any significant load on the, this output. What you can use it for 
is you could use that to go to a microcontroller input, for example, an, an analog input, something with a very high impedance or high resistance input. Um, or you could put an op amp and use a voltage follower circuit, so you take a high input, high impedance input, and then you get a low impedance output from that, and then you can use that to drive something else, okay? Um, so that's a voltage divider circuit. You can, if, you, if you're a PA engineer like me, um, you can kind of substitute this for your cable resistance calc. So imagine this is your speaker load. You know how, how many watts you're expecting. You would drive it 100 volts. So you can calculate the kind of resistance or impedance that you would get at this point. That's your speaker load. Then you can imagine that's your cable resistance that you calculate, you know, one or two ohms or whatever it turns out to be. You can then work out what your volt drop is. And um, in many instances, you shouldn't go below, uh, sorry, you shouldn't go above more than 10% of a volt drop, okay? So useful circuit, use it everywhere, and it's actually a handy calc to know. All right, catch you later.